Welcome to this BiFMQ tutorial. My name is Hannah and today we'll have a look at the chymograph and demograph plotting. I have already loaded a directory in the visualization tab. In the previous tutorial you have learned how to do so as well as gotten an overview over the different areas in here. In this directory we can see a growing biofilm. So we have a time series here. We also have two channels. One channel corresponds to a constitutive reporter, which we use for segmenting the files. The other one is a gene expression reporter. And today we want to find out what the activity of this reporter is depending on time and in space. We can do so by selecting the plot type 3D heat map chymograph. And when you do so, you will see that the heat map options over here become active. Here you can choose to change your heat map after plotting by applying an offset to the y-axis, by multiplying each value with a constant, removing a global or local offset, which works in the case that you use distance to substrate as a spatial measure, and you can also invert the y-axis. Today we want to plot the intensity of channel 2 over time and space. As a spatial parameter we will choose distance from substrate, so we will see how the fluorescence changes depending on the biofilm height. You can pick these axes by selecting the different parameters in the table up here and then clicking on the little plus button next to the fields. Now before plotting we should make sure that our bin size is chosen properly. The bin size should always be larger than the cube size. So in our case we have cubes of maybe one micron in height and we can see here the range of our distance from substrate is up to 24 microns. So if we choose 10 bins, for example, the bin size would be 2.4 microns, 24 by 10. So if we want to have a bin size larger than our cube size, we can choose, for example, 15 here. If you want to learn more about choosing the proper bin size, you can watch the histogram tutorial in which this is explained in more detail. If we now plot this, you can see the biofilm development over time. We now have the axis time here, and our spatial axis is the biofilm height. Our color code is the mean intensity of channel 2, which corresponds to the gene expression reporter, and therefore we can see the reporter activity, how it changes over time, and how it changes according to the biofilm height. Now each of these tiles represents the biofilm at one time point and one specific height, but that also means that we average over the biofilm height here. In some cases, you might want to look at additional spatial features. For example, we can look at the distance to the surface of the biofilm. So now we will not average over the biofilm height, but over the distance to surface. Other possibilities of spatial parameters would, for example, be the distance to the center of the biofilm. We choose the distance to the surface as a new axis. And when we plot it, we can again see the biofilm development. And again, we can see the reporter activity. However, here, since we're measuring the distance to surface, the value zero corresponds to the surface of the biofilm. And these areas here are not the outer areas of the biofilm, but actually the innermost areas. This is counterintuitive. And therefore we're going to apply the invert y-axis option here, which will turn around or which will invert our columns And therefore, we now have the biofilm center here and the outer area of the biofilm here, 
which is easier to understand. So this visualization now shows you your reporter activity over time and in a spatial resolution. Now we want to do demograph plotting. A demograph is similar to a chymograph, but we will not look at a time series, but instead we will look at different positions corresponding to different conditions. I have prepared a directory here, which I will load now. And in this directory, you can see I have different biofilms. Now we will load all of these biofilms to our workspace for plotting. However, now we don't want to perform the plotting over time because we don't have a time series, but instead we want the x-axis to correspond to the position of the biofilm. And the position of the biofilm or the index of the biofilm, which is shown here, is represented by the parameter frame. So frame in this case goes from 1 to 20. Again, we perform the plotting with the same settings as before, and you can see that now each column represents one biofilm, so one of the different positions, and you can see in which biofilms the reporter is more or less active and how this changes with the spatial uh, distribution. So now we have learned how to plot chymographs as well as demographs, and if you want to learn more about other plot types, we can watch our additional tutorials.